Attack Force is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world that if you make a movie with random unconnected scenes in a random order, it would still be more coherent than this flaming pile of dog sh**. <laughs> it starts off at a military research facility that's under attack. While this whole thing could have been prevented by just telling them to turn around, that's not how the military rolls. Instead, they send three helicopters to just watch everyone stand by and one overweight senior citizen in a Hummer. By the time he gets there, everyone's dead but this guy. And what comes next is one of the greatest fight scenes in history, where he just kind of pushes him, killing him instantly. But damn, that was a lot of work. So thankfully, none of whatever that was is ever mentioned again. Now we see Seagal doing one of his infamous prank phone calls where he pretends to be Martin Sheen. The consequences are the same no matter how you look at it. While rambling insane bullshit. We made the treaties, they broke them, and now you sit back and expect me to clean up after them? That's not gonna happen. It's the next day, and son of a bitch, now his voice is stuck like that. They come from a really good SF team. They warned him this could happen. Okay, children, let's go. But that's still somehow only the third dumbest thing to happen in the first 10 minutes of this train wreck piece of shit. Marshall Lawson, the man walks with an air of confidence it's rarely seen in this day and age. That's the second, but then Seagal gets his voice back and immediately tops it. Here's to what might could be a real good team. Go f yourself while he's still riding high knowing that dumb shit is gonna catch on like wildfire what well, might could be he gets even more good news you can always kill us sir he knows that and he will but it still feels good to hear it yeah we were uh, thinking of going to a titty bar that's unheard of in a seagull movie but just this once he'll allow it yeah while there, they decide to order prostitutes, but it's a Seagal movie, which means no budget, so they all have to split one. That girl. Meanwhile, this lady, who was born when Seagal was already in his 30s, walks by and tries not to make eye contact. Shit, she's only human, so what comes next is inevitable. <laughs> When she's done self-destructing because of daddy issues, Seagal's body double handles the stare situation and oh shit, this is bad. He had been looking forward to killing them all night. You can always kill us, sir. <laughs> I'm thinking about that already. This is total bullshit. But if Seagal's one thing, it's a liar. That's right, baby. But if he's two things, it's a liar and a narcissist. That's right. But if he's three things, it's a liar, a narcissist, and an embarrassment. But at some point, he's a professional and takes extra care not to disturb the crime scene. Oh my god, get out of the way, you dead piece of shit. Being dead weight in a Seagal movie is Seagal's job, so now he's pissed. No, not really. But he's still slightly annoyed, so he tells the police he doesn't care that this is France, the one that's in Europe. They're on the, my jurisdiction. They're in the US Navy, so get fucked. Dwayne, find that titty bar. Everything about that was weird as shit, and shift change can't come fast enough. Now that Seagal's running the show, he checks on the autopsy that I'm pretty sure is being performed by an OBGYN. What do you got? Massive physical trauma. That's shocking and a major breakthrough. With the bombshell news that they didn't all die of heart attacks, he's ready to crack the case. What now? I oh, don't know, man. Never mind, he gives up and the movie just kind of forgets about it. Now he tries entering this military facility and they're being total dicks. ID, please, this is a restricted area. Seagal tells him he's gonna have his ass for this, but he's not having any of it. I need you to vacate the facility. Oh my God, he is so gonna regret that. Did you promise to tell you why they revoked your clearance? Something about the Navy not having colonels, and that's the dumbest fake he's ever seen. 
No, not really. But fuck it, it doesn't matter because now they're investigating chemical weapons. So we're talking about chemical warfare. And things are going great. Sure, he forgot what branch he was in. You think the US Army is just gonna walk away from this? But he's in the Navy, so what do you expect? A large quantity of CTX is going to be released into the city's water supply. Nice try, dipshit. But he's a student of Seagal's and has mastered the anti-terrorism nuh-uh technique. I don't think so, guinea pig. Now that this whole thing has been resolved, there's no reason to mention any of this to anyone. Now, it's some other time, and they're going somewhere for some reason when Seagal confronts these random guys who turn out to also be in the Navy. See now, Naval Intelligence. So they hit up a bar and share stories of, just kidding, fuck you, and fuck you. Meanwhile, because everyone knows everyone, the foil terrorist breaks into her place with an exciting job offer. Work for me. That's a no. Yes. Yes, that's a no, or yes, she'll work for him. F*** it, we're moving on. Now Seagal is back in his favorite seat again, and the side scripts are stupid and just starts rambling. That's right, baby. Yes, he called him baby. He knows who sent me here, and he knows why I'm here, so he's not gonna say nothing to me. And what the f any of that means is so obvious the movie doesn't waste precious time explaining any of it. Why do you think I'm here? We didn't know you were here, and now that we do, she doesn't tell us. Thankfully, that weirdest sh scene finally ends and now they're somewhere else when she drops this bombshell. We've had traces of CTX show up in the town's water supply. That's so crazy, he had no idea. Then, after a quick ventriloquism contest... How much time we got? Current measurements predict 15,000 people will be fully addicted to CTX. Tell Marshall I'm having his armory brought here. He leaves, and nobody in this movie... You're welcome, soldier. No sh** about the Navy. At this point, not even Seagal can remember what the f*** is supposed to be happening. I think we're gonna have to start kicking over some trash cans real quick. And that's not a metaphor. They need something really stupid, and they need it right now. Perfect. After his usual, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, shooting doesn't work, he realizes it's a woman, which just happens to be his hand-to-hand -hand specialty. And we've officially reached the singularity of stupid. That shit doesn't even phase him anymore, and he just assumes Seagal fat need a woman through a pillar again. Which is good, because there's no time to explain, since Seagal just learned the term ASAP. Give me the injured out of here ASAP. Give me a majestic lab and interrogation ASAP. Give me a cleanup team in here, ASAP. So his life is all about that now. Then, after he falls asleep in the middle of a scene, she wakes him up with incredible news. They've discovered a way to weaponize patty cake. These nanographite blades were built for a man with your kind of fighting skills. So he puts them to the test by murdering their prisoner. Now, they're wherever the f this is for some reason, and son of a bitch, it happened again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I set it up. You know that. Then the movie cranks the nonsense up a notch when this guy is in three different places at once. They're gone. Damn it! This is a restricted area, how can I help you? But don't waste time thinking about that shit, because the US Navy, who make up most of Paris's population, send in a strike team against their own people. <laughs> But they don't call him Treason Seagal for nothing, and killing his own people is one of his favorite things to do. When word of all this gets back to the Admiral, who's stationed in Paris like most Admirals, he's fucking pissed. You sent in a team without my authorization. I had to make a split decision. Except we just saw him order it like five minutes ago. <sighs> Send in a strike team. But f it, let's just keep it moving. Just then, Seagal calls. We've got a secure call coming in for you, Admiral. 
and I guess sending strike teams is some sort of running joke. I'm assuming the strike team's dead. Because neither seem to take it seriously. Yeah, that's a good assumption. And deep down their best pals. Tell me when, where. Now he's clowning everyone with that silly voice again. If we can maintain the element of surprise. Any specifics that the army should know about? Tell the army that the navy is busy doing this, so if they could handle their own shit, that would be great. And they are animals out to kill you and your men. That seems like a bit much, but okay. There's just one small problem. They have no idea where to go or what to do. Luckily, this had an amazing writer who said, how about that cop from earlier? They're under my jurisdiction. Just calls and tells them where to go. This is where you need to send your troops. If you're wondering how he knows, that's the brilliant part. He hauls ass out of there and never has to explain shit. They agree to meet up at the church, but Seagal has to run a quick errand first. Just a few questions for you. Nothing to worry about. This is all routine stuff. First question, fuck you. Best feeling ever. Now that Seagal got his jollies, he's ready to start wrapping this shit up, but fuck that so he has his body double run up while he takes the stair lift while waiting for that they make a huge discovery and holy shit the so city's water supply system is contaminated it this is all brand new information then we get to see the our navy's most elite team who point guns at their teammates heads and just fucking bail on each other while Seagal would love to help, he's busy staring down the camera, so you're on your own. After running through the exact same place while mean mugging the camera again, they all split up, so it's easier for them to fall from the underground sky and kill a bunch of people we've never seen before. Now they're back where they started for the third time when he flies in and they know their guns are no match for his peanut butter safety seal. But being the first to scoop out the smooth top of peanut butter is the best fucking part. So Seagal guts him, then misses from a foot away, but recovers by beating the shit out of the top of his head. Now, it's the final showdown. Now you've come to kill me. Which is true, and he doesn't even know she's the villain. Of course not. Seagal wanted this fight to be something special, so after a spirited round of Miss Susie, he does the highly advanced move of shoving a woman through a wall that he claims he invented. Then he put his creativity to the test and struck gold when he wrote that Seagal man slaps her in the titties. Then she claws at him like a cat, which he counters with the quit it, quit it, quit it technique before punching her as fatly as possible, killing both her character and her career. Now Seagal and whoever this is make it out but there's no time to relax because the water's still contaminated and there's a high level conspiracy and I guess we're at 90 minutes and nothing's getting resolved. Fuck you France, the one that's in Europe and fuck you audience.